2012 Baltimore Sports Car Challenge presented by SRT demonstrated the unpredictable nature expected at a street circuit. We review the top five moments from Baltimore. Coming in at number five, this year saw the removal of two chicanes. However, on the front stretch during practices, cars were getting airborne when crossing the railroad tracks. Drivers were quick to voice their opinion about the bump. It's a, it's a big, big job. I don't know what you can do about it. Ideally, I, do, I, I really don't want to see the stupid chicane from last year come back, but maybe that's the solution. The car actually takes off for a, for a moment there, and uh, it's, it's pretty hairy. Effort was made to grind down the bump, yet the night before the race, officials decided to put the front stretch chicane back in place and to limit potential damage to the cars. This addition did not minimize the action on course. Coming in at number four, turn one saw a repeat pileup at the start of the race similar to last year. The street fight took its toll on many cars. The rest of the on-track action modeled that scene in the first turn. Fans saw cars from different classes battling for the same real estate during practice and during the race. These battles provided a spectacular show that the American Le Mans series is known to bring to street races. At number three, the P2 class presented some stunning and unpredictable results. The two level five cars fought throughout the race with Conquest Endurance's David Heinemeyer Hansen and Martin Plowman. Heinemeyer Hansen took Conquest's first lead at the 18 minute mark when he got around Scott Tucker shortly after the first restart. The Morgan Nissan held the lead until Heinemeyer Hansen pitted with 45 minutes in and handed off to Plowman. It appeared that another showdown between Plowman and Bushu loomed for the race victory until Plowman's suspension broke with 20 minutes left. The two level 5 cars led three times for 32 of the 67 laps. Bushu and Scott Tucker led a 1-2 finish for level 5 motorsports the team's second overall win of this year. The result gave Level 5 an added boost in the P2 Championship it continues to lead. Coming in at number 2, Dyson Racing's Eric Lux and Michael Marsal won the P1 race in their number 20 Lola Mazda. The duo recovered from an opening lap melee that dropped to 25 spots and went clean the rest of the way. It was the first ALMS win for Marsal and the first in P1 for Lux. The number 16 sister car of Chris Dyson and Guy Smith finished second in class and gained valuable championship points on Muscle Milk Picket Racing's Klaus Groff and Lucas Lohr, who finished third in P1. The championship leaders lost five spots with a stuck gear actuator and could not recover. That left the number 20 car with the advantage. And at number one, Wolf Hensler and Brian Sellers were repeat winners in GT Team Falcon Tire in their number 17 Porsche. Sellers held off Corvette Racing's Oliver Gavin by 2.208 seconds as the Falcon Porsche drove the last 70 minutes on a tank of the 85 and the same set of tires. Two caution periods in the last 16 laps helped the field stretch its fuel mileage. Hensler picked up two spots on the restart in the turn one melee that blocked a portion of the track. He took Falcon's first lead 21 minutes in and pitted from the lead 22 minutes later. Sellers held his own against Gavin over the final 73 minutes. The two cars held their position throughout with the number four Corvette unable to make a move on the Porsche. The next round is the American Le Mans Series presented by Tequila Patron VIR 240 from Virginia International Raceway. The four-hour race is scheduled for 2.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, September 15th. Live coverage starts at 2.15 p.m. Eastern on ESPN3. ESPN2's broadcast begins at 5 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, September 16th.